Well, hello and welcome right. to Circus History Live. I'm Bruce Hawley, president of the CHS. Circus History Live is produced monthly by the Circus Historical Society. This is our 29th episode. Recordings of previous sessions of Circus History Live are available on the CHS YouTube channel. Our featured guest tonight is Marty LaSalle. Marty is the CEO of the Big Apple Circus. He will discuss the unique collaboration of the Big Apple Circus with Germany's Circus Roncalli in its uh, 2023 production in Lincoln Center in New York City. We'll also talk about the, the Big Apple Circus's past and, and future plans. Uh, and now here's the host of Circus History Live, CHS Vice President, Chris Berry. Chris? Thanks, Bruce. In 1977, Paul Binder and Michael Christensen started the Big Apple Circus. Uh, it was a new one ring production based in New York. Over the years, it traveled to various places across the United States. And just a few months prior to that first Big Apple performance, a guy by the name of Bernard Paul founded Circus Theater Rincali in Bonn, Germany. These two productions have been known for more than 45 years as having best in class circus performances, both, both in America and in Europe. And this year in 2023, as Bruce said, they are collaborating for the first time to bring the Roncalli production, The Journey to the Rainbow, to Big Apple's longtime home at Lincoln Center's Domersch Park. And what a circus it is. I happened to see the opening performance about a week ago. Uh, it's an eight week, uh, only an eight week presentation there. It runs through January 1st, 2024. Uh, and as you said, Marty LaSalle, longtime Big Apple alumni, started as a juggler with his brother Jake after Paul Binder saw them both performing at uh, the Festival Mondial in Paris a uh, long time ago now. Today, Marty, as you said, is CEO of the Big Apple, and along with Michael Cole and Arnie Granat and their uh, EMC Presents, we now have the opportunity to see this collaboration for the next eight weeks only. So welcome, Marty, and uh, what a review you got in the New York Times just a couple of days ago. It was It was a very good review and we were happy to see it and uh, as as I was mentioning earlier Alexis uh, reporter at the Times has covered the Big Apple Circus for quite a few years now and she really understands who we are and what we're about uh, and it was really great to uh, receive the New York Times uh, critics pick and it makes everyone everyone here on site uh, energized and, and enthusiastic for what uh, is shaping up to be a, a really good uh, really good season here. So I've got some uh, pictures that during this presentation, uh, some of the folks, some of these pictures I took, some of them our friend uh, Paul Guthel took, and of course he's a, a great photographer. This is the poster that uh, you have here. Uh, obviously it has some of the things that are really important to run Kali. Just tell us about what we're looking at here, I guess even in the poster as people see before they come down to Lincoln Center. Yeah, so I, I love everything about this artwork. And to me, this really represents the spirit of the show this year in terms of the collaboration between two major circus brands that are all based in or that are both based in this traditional uh European one ring circus style uh so this was a this artwork was developed in collaboration with Circus Theater Roncalli's art uh, art direction team in Germany and our advertising agency RPM and we think it really captures the spirit of the partnership. Uh, Apollo here, uh, who is holding the little Statue of Liberty, is one of the stars of the show. He actually closes the show um, with this really poetic uh, clown act that has a lot of bubbles, uh, which which our audiences uh, really love. Uh, as as you all probably know, as uh, circus enthusiasts, the balloon is a is is a is a iconic uh, image for Circus Theater Roncalli. And it just was so appropriate to use it in the artwork here because it suggests that they're flying over from Germany in a hot air balloon and arriving to New York City. Um, and so we just love everything about this. It has a has a whimsical quality to it. I love the uh, illustrated nature of it, which really connects to Big Apple Circus's legacy. Um, and so I think it 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 really captures uh, captures what the show looks and feels like. And Chris, I hope uh, I hope you agree. Having having seen the show twice uh, last Saturday, 
It is. And uh, here's here's the big top. It's kind of hidden by those trees there, but it's at exactly the same location uh, where it was set up when you started uh, a number of years ago with the show. And I kind of I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. I mentioned earlier that Paul Binder saw you uh, really as a teenager when you were performing as a juggler. I know you're originally from Pennsylvania. Uh, you got your you made you and your brother, Jake, made your way over to Paris. Uh, tell me a little bit about you as a performer, I guess, to start with. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a full circle moment being back here at the Big Apple Circus. And I'm I'm told Paul Binder is on this um, on the Zoom with us, which which makes me very happy. Paul has been a huge, uh, huge influence in my life and a friend and mentor for a long time. Uh, we first cross pass, uh, crop, crossed paths. We've had five shows this weekend, so <laughs> 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 We uh, first crossed paths, uh, as you point out, Chris, at Cirque du Monde uh, Circus Festival in Paris in 2003. Uh, it's hard to believe that was um, that was more than 20 years ago now. Uh, this photo was taken, uh, of course, when we were at the Big Apple Circus, which was a which was a number of years later uh, when Paul approached us at, at Cirque du Monde. I'll, I'll never forget. I was I was laying backstage by these gilded stables. Uh, that used to house the animals and the horses, and I think I'm I, I'm on, I'm stretching on the ground, and I look up and see Paul Binder. Uh, we hadn't met before, uh, of course. I was familiar with the Big Apple Circus, and he introduced himself and uh, sussed out our interest in in performing at the Big Apple Circus, and he actually awarded us the the Big Apple Circus Award that year. And Paul would journey over to Paris every year. Uh, some years he would sit on the jur the jury. Uh, to um, select the awardees of the festivals. And uh, I don't know when, I don't know what year he started awarding the Big Alp Circus Award, but my understanding is it was given to performers that most closely embody the spirit of the Big Alp Circus. And so we left the festival with that award in hand. And ever since then, I've been very connected to the Big Alp Circus. Uh, my brother and I went to Columbia here in New York uh, after growing up in sport and developing this acrobatic juggling act. And while we were at Columbia, while we couldn't uh, commit to a full contract here at the circus, we worked with uh, the, the special events division, Cir Circus to Go. Um, so we did a number of uh, private performances with a Big Apple Circus. And then when we were getting ready to finish college, I called Paul and said, you know, remember when you said that uh, you might like to, like to have us at the Big Apple Circus, uh, you know, would you still like to have us? And um, and uh, and he said, sure. And it, I I I believe that he had already booked the uh, the circus for the upcoming year. So we went to Tiger Palace uh, in Frankfurt, which is a really wonderful uh, variety theater um, overseen by Margareta Dellinger. Uh, so we spent six months there, and then joined the Big Apple Circus for. Uh, Paul Binder's last year's artistic director, actually, it was the 2008-2009 season, and just fell in love with everything about it, uh, the intimacy, the connection to New York City, and Paul Binder's spirit, uh, what the Big Apple Circus is about, um, and so we were here for the whole year um, and toured to, I believe it was 12 markets, markets that year, and, um, and here I am again. 14. I think it's terrific. You know, uh, obviously place. a lot of there's been a lot of water under the bridge, not only, uh, you know, as we look at the things that have happened over the past uh, 15 years or so, uh, but especially even with Big Apple, uh, change ownership, I went from being a nonprofit to now profit making uh, company. Uh, Michael and Arnie, of course, uh, you know, have a very, uh, you know, deep deep in love for the circus. They hired you to be the guy who's the producer of the new show. And that's what I'd like to talk about now. Um, this new production, which is uh, a collaboration of Circus Rancali and Big Apple, how did it all come about? Really good question. Um, so I joined in this role about a year and a half ago um, in the summer of 2022. Um, so as, as most of you know, these um, shows are in development for quite a bit of time. So I mostly inherited a show last year. We had a we had a really good season. Uh, coming into this year, 
we were discussing with our partners what approach we wanted to take. And Michael Cole, who uh, you just mentioned, is a legendary music promoter. Uh, he probably is one of the most consequential promoters ever. Uh, he almost single-handedly changed how bands tour, and he went on to become the first chairman of Live Nation. Uh, he established a joint venture with a company called Ventum CTS in Germany before COVID to build out a promoting business uh, here in the U.S., and he took ownership uh, of the Big Apple Circus um, coming out of COVID, and uh, his partner, who is the CEO of Eventum CTS, because he's in Germany, he's known Bernard for a long time. And it was actually a relationship that uh, Eventum uh, set up with Michael Cole, and it was Michael's idea to explore a partnership with, uh, with Circus Roncalli this year. So I went over to Germany and got to know the team there on the ground. And these are the best, they're the best traditional circus creators and producers in the world. And it came together very quickly. It came together very naturally. Circus Roncalli has always wanted to establish a, a presence in New York. Um, they obviously operate their One Ring Circus show, but they also do a lot of holiday shows and Spiegel 10 shows and they're they're active in other categories. So it was it was easy for them to understand how to create a show uh in a for for different audiences in a different environment and with with a with a partner you know when you take a look at uh bernard paul who of course started circus Rancali uh back in the 70s it really uh is a unique program itself i i know he has said that uh andy warhol came to see his show one time and said you know i really wish that this show could come to america and now you brought it to america yeah, absolutely. So Bernard Paul, I mean, he's such a um, he's such a legend. Uh, as is Paul Binder, as as are a lot of these <laughs> these circus creators who came out of this who came out of this nineteen uh, seventies uh, cultural firmament firmament. Um, and you know, some of my best memories of the last year are sitting in Bernard's vintage circus trailer uh, in Germany, where he regales us with stories about. Uh, all these people who've uh, gravitated towards uh, circus theater around Kali over the years. Andy Warhol is one of them. Uh, Keith Haring is another one. Um, and it really is, it really is and has been a magnet for artists over the years. And uh, at various times, there, there's been conversations with Feld Entertainment and, and Kenneth Feld uh, to partner on something. And it just, you know, it's, it's this business, it's all about timing in a lot of ways. And the stars never aligned. And this year, this year they did. It was the right people at the right time, uh, with the right, uh, with 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 an, with enough alignment on, <laughs> in terms of uh, creative vision and also uh, and also economic considerations to to make it happen. So it was really special uh, to have Bernard here, um, and um, you know I think I think he's really proud of of what uh, what him and his team accomplished. So you've been around Big Apple for a long time. So let's get right to the show here. Uh, this this photograph that you're seeing right now, and again, I want to thank uh, Paul Guthel for providing many of these uh, photos that we're looking at today. This is the opening of the show. Uh, you can see sort of the Roncalli uh, wagon over there, which is typical of what, what we see in Germany. But tell us a little bit about uh, who these artists are uh, at the start of the show and so forth. Well, we have a big cast this year. Uh, which is something that I'm really excited about. Uh, last year's show had 14 or 15 people, uh, and it was a it was a strong show. We had strong acts, but it we didn't have those moments that felt. It, it, I mean, this is this is my opinion uh, that felt full uh, with with a big with a big cast. And so we have 34 performers uh, this year. Um, six of them are. Uh, our our uh, local uh, New York City dancers. They're you, uh, perfect, uh, perfect photo here. Um, which the Big Apple Circus, I believe, has had previously. Um, but as a lot of uh, people on here probably know, uh, circus performance is not necessarily the same as as dance, and a lot of circus people don't necessarily have the best rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> so acrobats they have other skills <laughs> acrobats acrobats are trained to be very 
rigid in, in a lot of ways. And it's a different, it's, it's a different um, quality of, of physical training and skill. And one of the things that I've always loved about the Big Apple Circus is that it does have the razzle dazzle of New York City. And so, and, and Circus Roncalli, they have often used uh, dancers in their show. So we really were excited by the idea of casting local New York City dancers, bringing in a real choreographer and having there be this company of dancers that complement the circus acts. Um, Chris, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned the bands. Uh, one of the best things about the Big Apple Circus is the bands, uh, which has been, been part of the show for as long as I've been familiar with the Big Apple Circus. Uh, this year, the band is, is prominently featured uh, here, on the, here on the bandstand. Um, and then, of course, we have all of our amazing circus performers uh, really sourced from all over the world. Uh, I'm biased, but I really like the juggler. I really like the foot juggler. Uh, when I was at when I was at Tiger Palace, I worked with one of the um, sort of the Anthony Gatto of of foot juggling. Um, and ever since then, I've been really enamored by and in love with foot juggling. But they're they're hard to come by, and uh, our foot jugglers um, from New Zealand. She doesn't come from a circus family like me. She just saw a circus when she was a kid and decided that she needed to be part of that world. Um, so we have some really great jugglers. We have a, a Bunkeen uh, acrobatic troupe from Russia um, who are really impressive. We have a great collection of clowns. Yes, we do. Yeah, at which, which this I- is Paolo. Yeah. Paolo, so this is Paolo. Uh, so he closes the show. Um, I think we just sort of um, spoke about him a little bit, but he um, has his beautiful poetic- uh, act with um, it's act. It's his daughter actually who who sings uh, for half of the uh, half of the performance, and there's just bubbles everywhere. <laughs> it's a really yeah. beautiful poetic um, moment. And then we have four four additional clowns. Uh, Apollo's not part of the the clown troupe, um, but there's four other clowns that just interact with each other throughout the evening, and really are really are the heart and soul of the show, in, in a in a good way. Uh, we have a we have a double wire act um, who uh, this guy is just um, he does a front flip. He does a back flip. He jumps from wire to wire. Really impressive. Uh, we have a oh, Chris, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, it's OK. I I uh, just kind of scrolling through some of these uh, photos because there's so many great moments uh, in the show here. Uh, you talked about this wire act and, uh, you know, here here he is a uh, nice photograph. Um, you know, we don't, you don't see a forward somersault very often on uh, in any wire. And this is a double wire uh, that he's performing on, which is really unique also, uh, the whole setup. Now, now, tell us a little bit about him as a performer. Uh, well, he's, he's very, he's very stylish. <laughs> he's, he's very fast. Uh, he's very sharp. Uh, I think you, you really have to be sharp to be on a wire. Uh, and and Chris, to your point, he he's he's technically proficient. Uh, most people probably wouldn't appreciate this, but a front flip is is much harder than a back flip uh, yeah. because uh, those of us who have done back flips or front flips, uh, you know that if you do a back flip, uh, you can see the ground before you land. Um, and I can't even imagine what it would be like to do a front flip on a wire. I know how hard it is to d just do it on the on the floor. Um, so when you're doing a front flip, you're completely blind uh, when you're coming around to uh, to for the landing. So so it's and, impressive. It's impressive. For those who have for those who haven't seen the act, what this photograph is here. So there are two wires that are crossing each other. As you can see, one of them is a couple of feet higher than the other wire. He jumps across the wire and lands on the other side, and a really very very skilled uh, wire performer. Yeah, he's excellent. Has a great energy. He's the third act in the show. This is the other thing that I'm that I, you know, that that I I really like about the show. It's just and and this is this this uh, ties into just the craftsmanship of circus making, which Circus Roncalli has has really perfected. But it's just it's really well paced. The the acts are in the right order. <laughs> and no I ringmaster though, you don't really need one, do you? 
Or I guess you... I guess not. You know, it's it's a good it's a good question, Chris. And um, you know, the the um, I think about this a lot, and, and there'll never be a replacement for Paul. And I'm not just saying that because he's on the Zoom here. Um, <laughs> and you know, I. Um, I, I don't think we need it. I don't think we need it. I think that there's I, I think that there's opportunity to uh to to integrate um ringmasters and potentially build uh build a character around um the 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 sort of idea of a ringmaster. Um but I don't think that anything is missing in the show this year uh without having one. I think you're. I think you are right, and it moves very, very fast. Uh, you talked a little bit earlier about uh, Noel Aguilar, who uh, a lot of those on the call may have seen. He's been uh, around American circuses. Well, he's multi generational. Uh, he's a terrific juggler, and uh, you know he does things obviously with clubs. Uh, you know juggling, <laughs> Marty. I do. I mean, I do. You've done it professionally. Yeah, I, know, I know juggling in this ring. <laughs> In the exact same tent, in the exact same ring, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, he just kind of, for those who haven't seen it, kind of talk us through the act here. Uh, you know, he does more than clubs. He does more than clubs. Um, so Noel, I, I think, is 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 a real uh, star of the show. Uh, we couldn't have a better open opener. Um, you, you know, he just, he he riles up the crowd. He's, he's a, he, he's a really gifted performer. Uh, he, juggles with a very with a very Mexican style uh it's very fast it's very uh it's it's very um I don't know what the word is but hunched over sounds sounds derogatory it's not derogatory but it's just it's very fast the Russians are you know stand taller um but he and and one of the best things about him is that he he really uses the the ring uh and he really moves he, he really covers a lot of space a lot of jugglers uh i think are so focused on what's happening in the air with their objects that uh a lot of times they don't they don't move they don't move very well and they don't cover a lot of ground and so the first the the, the majority of his act is with these clubs here and he uses every single foot of that ring um and then he uh he uses he does the ping pong balls um with his mouse which is always a crowd pleaser uh and then he ends with the sombrero hats um, which is super high energy and the last the last uh throw he makes he does a flip when he catches it and it's a it's it's a great it's a great send off and and a, um a high point of of his act he yeah, really this is, uh, this is a great photo it just captures the it captures the the style and the and the tension uh, it's, it almost has like a flamenco <laughs> quality to it. Tremendous uh, showmanship too. You know, you can tell uh, he's he grew up around the circus and had uh, some excellent mentors in his own career too. Um, you mentioned uh, some of the clowns that are in the act and or in the show rather. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's full of clowns and they're funny too. Um, they do uh, this. Tell us a little bit about this fellow here. He he does uh, an act with bells. <laughs> he does he doesn't act with bells. So this uh, this comes I believe right after Noel, right? Or am I getting? Yep. Crazy? I think. Um, and so this is this is the first uh, clown sort of um, uh, sort of um, focus clown moment in the show, and it's sophisticated. His his clowning partner comes out with a sign of Vivaldi, and and it's um, you know I don't know that kids get that, but the but the adults chuckle. Um, and he uses his whole body to uh, to to uh, make sounds with these bells, <laughs> and, and uh, you know people people find it uh, amusing for sure. And this guy, he's he's the best. He's so sweet. You know, it's a it's a very obviously it's a very European style of performing. Uh, there are a lot of European acts on on this show. Uh, tell me a little bit about bringing in these uh, acts from Europe. I mean, it must, it must be very difficult to get visas and things like that. It, it's, it's, it's difficult in the sense that it's, it's a very involved process, but as long as you cross your T's and dot your I's and have the right people uh, supporting those initiatives, there's you every now and then there's something that comes up, but we had 62 visas uh, that we had to get this year. Uh, which included the um, creative team, uh, 
on the circus theater Roncalli side and the performers and and the performers they're not just from Europe Chris they're truly from all over the world two of the clowns yeah. that's Ken um and uh some of them have worked with circus Roncalli uh previously uh, a lot of them haven't um and the 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 visa procurement process especially especially now you know there's a lot of sensitivities with um with uh parts of the world uh, that have made it a lot harder uh, but we were, you know, we were fortunate this year uh, to be able to bring in every single act that we had, um, every single act and every creative team member that we had, uh, we had selected. You know, I think most of the people on this uh, call have seen a lot of circuses over the years. Uh, but I got to tell you, there's a guy who you have on the show. His name is uh, Andre Romanovsky. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. This, uh, he's a contortionist. He's a... Uh, He's unbelievable. So to kind of walk us through what he's doing here. Well, I, I love this act so much. And this this is um I'm very drawn to the spirit of of uh classical vaudeville. And I've always been very drawn towards the the variety, uh the variety world in in um in Europe, uh the variety theater community. And this this act could fit in any of those, uh could fit on any of those stages. Um so He's a contortionist. Um, he has this really unusual prop uh, that I don't know. Chris, what do you call it? Is it a prop? Is it a set? Well, to me, okay, so <laughs> here's what I got out of it. He, he comes out as a chimney sweep to me, and this is a chimney. And he uh, climbs up to the top of it and eventually uh, goes down, you know, bottom first, uh, as you can see, as a contortionist. But by the end of the act, he's actually head first and goes all the way to the bottom of the chimney which uh, is just an amazing stunt in itself. And uh, what a what a performer. Right, right. head first after his hat. <laughs> so I just, I love the interplay of the, of, of the character and the contortion, which is the circus skill and also the distinctive style of movement. Um, and then just the, 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 the professionalism of, of the, costume selection and the design of the prop pieces and um and it's just it's there's no there's no act like his and then once he, he comes out of the chimney at first then he starts jumping rope using the rope in his feet and using his hands to jump through it's just uh, absolutely astounding and if you have an opportunity to see uh the big apple circus circus red and collie uh, in new york this this holiday season uh, this is an astounding act. Yeah, he's, 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 it's like I said, there's just, there's nobody like him. Uh, to me, this is such a, um, it's such a example of what circus and the variety arts is about. It's all about uh, doing things that nobody else can do. And sometimes there's, you know, sometimes that can be a little bit weird, but that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> So you are uh, you're watching uh, Circus History Live, which is a monthly production from the Circus Historical Society. And one of the things, one of the great things about Circus History is uh, it happened. It's happening today. Uh, I often say that uh, journalism is the first draft of history. And our meeting here today, talking to you, having all of these people on watching, uh, this is the first draft of Circus History because you're making history with uh, Big Apple Circus and Circus Rincali. So uh, again, we have this, this call once a month. I hope that uh, you're able to join us. All of you are able to join us again at some point. Uh, it is an, a monthly production of uh, the Circus Historical Society. So um, let's get back, let's get to the aerial acts, because I know that, you know, those are things that absolutely are uh, people, you know, they're crowd pleasers to start with, but you've got some great aerial acts on this show also. Absolutely. So this is a, a duo, uh, a duo strap act that uh, does really impressive, um, really impressive uh, tricks um, and um, sort of inverts the normal uh relationship between the 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 male and the female uh the, the the um woman actually does a lot of the base um or does a lot of the lifting um which is really impressive and this is the this is the act that most fills the 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 sky of the big top or the air of of the big top it has a lot of movement um and it's a it's a big visual act and uh, and there's confetti 
um, at the end, which is <laughs> which is a crowd pleaser. Um, and uh, they also have a they also have a very distinctive uh, sense of style. It's very very European, and it's a it closes the first half of the show. Um, and it's another it's an, yeah there you go there's a, it's amazing how much people love that um yeah, and, it's uh, it's a surprise you know and i think that surprise uh, yep yeah, it's it's really uh something that that gets the attention of uh of the folks who, who are there um you know we also have another uh terrific uh act which is actually two men uh who do a uh an aerial act together too. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of that because it's very impressive what these guys do. Um, the strength is just phenomenal. And and Chris, uh, uh, just a sort of an aside fun fact. I didn't even remember this, but these guys were actually um, at Cirque du Demon 20 years ago in the same festival my brother and I were in. Um, and when he arrived, uh, when he arrived to site, he came up. So so good to see you again. And I. <laughs> That's like what? What? Do you, what? Um, they do. So. They do a, uh, a a thing with their feet, which Paul uh, Guthel was able to get a picture of. Pretty amazing. No net, uh, as they're hanging, uh, truly just by each other's feet. Amazing. Yeah. And this there's there's two moments there there's there's two moments in the show or two acts in the show that really create a sense of daring and and danger uh this is one um especially when he's hanging by his foot and you know we keep everyone safe and there's a map but they're still they're still high up um and then the second is the is the bunkeen act uh i mentioned chris where where there are multiple uh three high uh three high pyramids that uh are dangerous anyway you know on any on any day and uh, another, you know, the other thing that I know a lot of people were talking about was the tremendous costuming that you got on the show this year. Uh, this is a, a great picture of uh, one of your aerialists also. What a costume. The costumes are one of my favorite parts about the show. Uh, they're big. They're beautiful. They are colorful. They pull from a wide range of styles and influences and they fill the they fill the ring they make the show feel sophisticated they make it feel premium uh it feels like a broadway show better than a broadway that. show <laughs> yeah it feels like a broadway show and I, I i and i just i just absolutely love it yeah and here's the uh the three acts uh going uh in the lira at the same time too just yep. uh, really yeah, really is, uh, yeah, this, you is know, this is uh, this is absolute pure circus uh and and don't let anybody tell you anything other than that <laughs> yeah well and the ringmaster while you're sure i just love all the um the ringmaster inspired uh costumes on the dancers here it's one of my favorite visual uh elements of the show is when is when the dancers are in are in that um are in that look and they're and they're framing the circus performers i just think it's 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 fashion forward it's design forward it's it's sexy in a way and it just it's it um it really uh it really works so when when you take a look at kind of what you're doing right now um big apple circus for many years i mean it, it toured around uh, the boroughs of new york uh eventually uh going to boston going down to dc uh at one point the show yeah. actually was at soldier field in chicago uh and what do you think i mean are we going to be able to see the big apple circus uh, circus Roncalli, uh in some future form in other places other than new york i certainly i certainly hope so um and if i if i succeed uh in what i'm what i'm trying to do uh you will <laughs> so but the you know um as as we all know um circus is it's it's a wonderful business, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging business. Uh, there are, um, challenges on, on the revenue side and, 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 uh, creating, um, programming that resonates, but also, uh, developing marketing and sales campaigns that drive a high volume of tickets. We're not talking about 10,000 tickets, uh, in, in a market to support a tour. We're talking tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands. 
And so um, there's challenges on the revenue side, and then and then probably more 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 importantly, there's there's challenges on on the 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 operations side. These are uh, th these are operational beasts in a lot of sense, and um, there's different models obviously to support uh, the 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 touring um, uh, support touring a big top show, but you have you have to bring the whole big top with you food and beverage and merchandise and run a box office and we still have a a, a model where uh we house um and we have 80 people here on site there's a whole circus village so in some ways we're operating a operating a hotel and then there's all the infrastructure that goes <laughs> this is probably boring but <laughs> there's all the, no, this is all the infrastructure <laughs> there's all the infrastructure that goes into it the electrical the power um the, the water um the security and fencing and so um so so my my view with the, with the big apple circus and and um you know it has been for a while and i haven't been involved formally with the big apple circus um up until a year and a half ago but i um stayed connected to certainly paul and various people at the company and i just my, my position was has has been for a long time that the 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 circus can tour but it needs to really tour from a position of strength and i think the best way to establish that uh uh, place of strength um, and and strong foundation is here at Lincoln Center in New York City, and so um, before I joined, uh, the decision was had already been made to discontinue the tours, uh, which which I think was the right one um, at the time, um, and is uh, you know a, a strategic um, plan that that I really support. So the 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 goal is really to invest in the New York City engagement. Uh, really elevate the quality of our programming, um, and and when I say programming, I don't mean Chris just what happens on stage. Uh, and one of the things that I speak about a lot is what I is is that I want to get people to think about the Big Apple Circus not as going to a circus, but going into a circus. Um, and it's really about the it's really about the whole experience. And so um, my goal is to really make the the experience here again vibrant and 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 really sing in in all the areas that people interact with the business and i think we have a a, a really incredible platform to do that here at lincoln center as as you probably know we've been here at lincoln center for 41 years um which is which is pretty amazing uh there's actually a a, a public discussion right now um at lincoln center uh, around renovating damage park um, and so there's a scenario where that renovation uh, really supports um, the operations of the circus in a way that will open up new frontiers just from a, a programming and, and creative perspective, which I think is is really exciting. Um, so I uh, because it is such an important part of uh, New York uh, Lincoln Center this time of year has been for decades, generations really at this point. Uh, this shows you kind of outside of Lincoln Center. Uh, you know, very much first class uh, operation as it always has been uh, as people approach the ticket wagon. Uh, and then inside, uh, you've got costumes from previous performances, sort of the historical legacy uh, that Paul Binder and uh, Bernard Paul uh, put together. Um, you've got uh, obviously, you know, the other uh, big part of this, of course, is the tent itself. And uh, the fact that it has uh, been such an important part of the landscape this time of year also. Um, how many people does this tent fit? And the other question is, if if somebody wanted to come and see the show, how much is it going to cost to go see it? Well, good good question. And if if actually, can if you go back to that last photo, I just, that you're talking, so one of the, and um, Chris, I'll, I'll answer those questions in just a second, but one of the things that, that I really am um, personally the most proud about uh, this year uh, is the reconfiguration of the front of house here. Um, and for for a number of years, uh, the Big Alps, and it hasn't always been this way, but um, the, the, the connection to the Lincoln Center campus um, hasn't been as strong as I, as I think it, it can be. And, it, and, and there's, there's legitimate reasons for that. I mean, we have to surround the site with a chain link fence um, and there's not many ways to make a chain link fence look attractive. So, um, so earlier in the summer, we were thinking about how can we, how can we improve 
um, our, our sort of exterior uh, just um, exterior presence. And so all the way to the right here on the photo, you can see that there's this wall, there's this blue wall that we built. Um, and so we, um, we built what, what I call a gallery wall. Um, and so it's, it's like a museum. Uh, it's a wall that has uh, various uh, posters from Big Apple Circus and Circus Roncalli's uh, history. Um, and it has these nice little arches um, that are lit with the marquee lights um, along the uh, along the wall. And then it has a, a little, um, a couple paragraphs sort of contextualizing the partnership in Big Apple Circus's history. So I love this. And then on the left here, um, you can see that we activated um, this platform that sits above a parking garage with a, 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 a tent rental, but we made the we made the um, sidewalls glass. Um, so the idea is is to create tie is sort of tap into this uh, tradition of um, window displays at, in department stores. And so on one side here, you see all these um, Chris, as you mentioned, all these um, circus old circus costumes. Um, which are really great. And when you're in the tent, and Chris, you can speak to this, I'm biased and I've I've been in there too much, but you really feel connected to Lincoln Center because you're elevated and you feel these really beautiful buildings around you. Um, and uh, and it's this very warm, um, warm, inviting environment. So I I I I I watch people enter um and and sort of view the gallery wall every day. And and I think it I think this it's a it's a it really improves the intake. Um, so this I'm proud about, uh, the Big Apple Circus, uh, tent seats, there's 1,627 seats, uh, if every seat is, um, if every seat is used, um, we typically kill a number of those seats for, um, for various reasons. Sometimes there are, uh, physical apparatuses that, um, that require rigging, um, that don't allow us to use all those seats. And then some of those seats are are um, somewhat obstructed by the masts, uh, and then we we hold seats. So we have 15, six, 15, uh, 1,565 seats um, that are on sale to the um, to the public. Our ticket prices range widely. Uh, one of the things that I believe and I reinforce uh, with our marketing and sales team is that we really have different we have different audiences. We have audiences who are not price sensitive. We're here in New York City. Uh, we had a we had a lot of major stars here at our opening. Scarlett Johansson and Colin Joss were just here at the show here at Four, which is which is great to see. Um, so we have we have some audiences that can can afford um, very expensive tickets. Uh, we actually sell a box uh, for thirty five hundred dollars. It's eight seats. Wow. Yes, yeah, it's, it's eight seats. Um, so that's about four hundred some ticket. Uh, Broadway shows that you know if you're going to be down in the orchestra top you know first five rows you're going to be paying that anyway to see uh, any of the shows that are on right now exactly and so we sell this um it's it's just two boxes and it's there's two available and it's just during the weekend um and it's up to eight seats and you get you have um uh concierge service so you have someone who will bring you whatever you want and then there's a little photo opportunity after the show you come onto the ring and meet some of the performers so that's about a $450 ticket. And then we have, we're, we're very aware that we're a volume play. Um, we'll do 105 shows here. We'll likely, we haven't announced yet, but we'll likely extend for two weeks, in which case we'll uh, have 105 shows. Um, and so that's a lot of people. Um, and the weekday shows historically struggle because our audience is mostly families and families with little kids can't be out late. Um, and so we have uh we have we have targeted um promotions to price sensitive customers and and so you can get tickets for twenty dollars um you know on on certain days uh and certain show times so uh i'm gonna open it up to questions here too uh if you have a question uh for marty you can put it into the chat and we'll get to as many of them as we can uh, i do want to talk a about a couple more of the uh acts that you have on the show right now you mentioned her earlier, Emma Phillips, uh, who is uh, this amazing foot juggler. I mean, uh, here she is. Uh, she's got all kinds of stuff going there. Yeah, she's from, she's from she's New amazing. Zealand, right? What was that, Chris? She, New Zealand, is that where she's from? Yeah, and she's 
and she yeah she's one of my favorite i mean i you know we all have we all have our preferences and biases i'm biased uh, for obvious reasons um but i just i just think she's great and and i she actually i think her and the um the double wire act have a have a have a similar sense they just have they have such a strong uh they just they just have such a strong um they're just very sharp in their movements and i love how she comes out with the company of dancers and you think she's one of them like you don't necessarily think she's gonna break out into this foot juggling act because she has that um she has that uh she has that strength of presence um but she's she's great she does the table she does the um carpets and the umbrellas so uh the lighting and music uh you know you talked about that a little bit earlier uh, Stacia Kelly asked, uh, or actually she was there at the show, so she knows, uh, you know, what we had there. T tell us a little bit about that that band. I mean, you talked about it earlier. I know that uh, it has its roots uh, in Circus Roncalli, but you don't see a lot of live uh, bands. There is a couple of circuses now in the United States that are still touring with live bands. Uh, but this is something that uh, is a kind of been a part of the whole circus uh, scene there. For so yeah. long as at Big Apple, and you've been able to kind of continue that now. Yeah, I mean, I I can't I can't imagine a Big Apple circus without a band. I mean, it, to me, it's just it's such a foundational part of what the experience is for the audience, but also for um, for the performers. I mean, as as a juggler, uh, the, the, I think a rela the relationship with a band is is very involved because the the the, the timing of juggling is so precise and varied and to have a band that can be following you and look you sometimes you make mistakes you know <laughs> like you gotta you know it's it's helpful to have a band who can you know play a you know <laughs> like like extend something out for 30 seconds or whatever it takes to recover from the mistakes um but uh but yeah the band is is just it's it's so foundational to the spirit of the circus and in prior years it's been a little bit hidden um, which, which I, you know, which, which was not, um, something, um, I love to see. And so it's really nice this year to see the band see, uh, to, to see the band see, uh, be so prominently featured. Um, and then there's a moment when the, uh, the, the, the pianist comes down and, and plays on the, plays on the ring and it makes, it really makes, it really brings the music into the, into the ring in a way that I haven't seen at the Big Apple Service in a while. And, uh, you know, at one point during the show, you bring a grand piano out into the circus ring, too. It, you know, exactly. Yeah. But, that's but by the same to token, one of, one of the members of the band, who some of the people on this call may know, Wages Argat, who was the band leader for the Red Unit of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, you know, he was telling me what a thrill it was for him to play Entry of the Gladiators. You know, you play traditional circus music on the show also. Absolutely. And Wages is, I mean, he's an MVP. I mean, he just... The band wouldn't. We, we wouldn't. The, the, so the band we we um we work with a, with a local union here. Um, and every year there's a there's there's a negotiation. Um, that you know can can um is is involved. <laughs> you know, and uh and wages isn't involved in that, but he um you know he just he keeps a um he he just he keep he keeps it all together and and he just he loves showing up uh to work every day and like a lot of the people around the big apple circus he understands um what the big apple circus is and he just you know he he uh he finds these amazing amazing musicians and he's he's, he's I mean, terrific yeah he's, uh, and and it, was uh, doing like his good things about his, him his many years on Ringling too. Uh, Donna Paul asks a question, uh, which you may have sort of touched on earlier. These dancers that you have, I mean, they are uh, really uh, first rate. You know, uh, I don't know if they've ever worked together before they work together on your show, but uh, do they do any other things in the show other than um, just their dance routines? Not just their dance routines, but <laughs> no, no, they they don't. Um, the, none of them um, have signed up to do a circus act yet um you know i'm sure some of them are practicing tricks backstage uh but they are. they're um they're focused on they're focused on dancing they're all uh they're all young um i think the oldest one is is 21 i could be wrong about that but um we had we had auditions over the summer and we just had this overwhelming number of you know people who wanted to wanted to dance at the big apple circus 
Um, and, uh, and for all of them, um, this is their first real professional, lar large scale professional um, job in New York. Um, and, and you feel it in, in, the, in the best possible way. They're just incredibly, uh, they're, they're incredibly, um, they, they put 110% out there in every show. Yesterday was the first, uh, was our first three show day. Um, and, uh, and they just, you know, they, they're thriving. Yeah, they really, really bring so much to the uh, to the equation overall. Uh, again, it's an absolutely first rate show. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to join us today, Marty. Uh, if you're not a member of the Circus Historical Society already, I would urge you to uh, join us. We uh, not only have programs such as Circus History Live, but of course our Bandwagon Magazine, a quarterly publication, a journal which looks at circus history. Uh, comes as part of your membership. If you're interested in joining, be sure to uh, go to circushistory.org. That is uh, the website where you can join. We would love to have you as a member. Uh, I'm just gonna bounce through a couple of uh, more photos here uh, before we let you go. Um, this is uh, of course, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the pictures of the finale here. And as you can say, what do you have about 45 performers all in uh, on the show? Sure. No, well, I would love to have forty-five. Uh, <laughs> we have we have thirty. Uh, we have thirty-four plus um, plus uh, eight musicians. Yeah. So, and then of course, all the people behind the scenes. Uh, some of you may recognize this face here. Uh, when I saw it, it looked like a young Johnny Harriet. Uh, <laughs> that's probably because that's his grandson, uh, John Walker, who uh, is also one of the people who is very instrumental in keeping the show run on time. Right, Marty. Uh, John, John, he's, um, you know, it's interesting. Like I, when we, when we install these shows, um, you know, my job is, my job is to uh, pay attention to things that to areas where there's problems. Um, and, you know, it's always, it's always things that, things that kind of go wrong. And with John, John, like, you know, we open the show and it's like, John, I haven't seen you in two weeks. You know, it's just, it's because he just takes care of everything. It's just, it's always, you know, he just, he just, uh, he's, um, yeah, he, he, he works so hard and he gets job done and he's good in the ring. I mean, he's a performer. Yes, he is. Uh, again, just another example of the fantastic uh, costuming that goes into this show. Uh, there's one of the spectators heads is kind of in the way there, but that woman with the yellow hat on sort of in the front, her costume is the Runcali tent. Uh, you see another woman there who's got uh, chandeliers as her costume. Just really, truly spectacular. Uh, and a lot of these costumes, um, Chris, just a lot of these costumes were already made. Like, this is what's so great about Circus Roncalli. They have a warehouse of just so much stuff. And so, so this is one of the real upsides to partner with them. And it, it, it's really a reflection of their spirit of generosity to have have gone through all these, you know, has, have mined their inventories and found the best, you know, found some of the best stuff for us. Yeah, it's, it's truly uh, spectacular. And uh, again, you know, we wish you the very best as you continue on with uh, this season of Big Apple Circus and Circus Roncalli. Uh, I want to thank uh, you for joining us, Marty. I want to thank uh, Paul Binder, uh, who started this, who's with us on the call here today. And of course, our friend Paul Guthel, who provided us with many of the photographs that you've seen today. Uh, again, welcome uh, to... Circus History Live, we do this every month. We'd love to have you as a member of the Circus Historical Society. CircusHistory.org is our website. Uh, Marty, wishing you the very best and we'll see you down the road, Bruce. Thank, thank you, you, Chris, and thank you, Marty. Uh, fabulous, fabulous program tonight. Uh, we really appreciate the insight, Marty, into what's happening at the Big Apple. It's a beautiful show. And as I mentioned, I've already seen it twice. I'll probably see it a couple more times. It's fabulous. <laughs> But anyways, uh, thanks to Marty for appearing tonight. Um, thank you, Chris, for being our host. Thank you, Anya Norris, who's behind the scenes recording. Uh, Anya is one of our trustees. She's also, she also does our social media and YouTube channel. And finally, thank all of you for attending our program of Circus History Live. And as Chris said, if you're not already a member, please join. Go to circushistory.org. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you down the road.